Hello, this is Kara Schutz from MathWorks, and this is our second video on the topic of clock recovery from a binary data stream. In the initial video, we covered the clock recovery concept at a high level, then we um, ran the model, looked at some waveforms to try to get a feel for how the system was working. In this video, I want to take a step back and look at synchronization uh, and what happens when you don't have synchronization, and then we'll proceed to take a little bit uh, deeper dive in, into the PLL. So first of all, let's take a look at just synchronization in general, uh, what kind of waveform we're sending, um, and what happens when you aren't synchronized. So uh, let's just assume um, for this kind of hypothetical test experiment that we are sending ones and zeros, our data from the transmitters ones and zeros, and that would be our red dashed uh, square wave uh, waveform. Uh, a positive one would be a correspond to 0.5 volts, and an, uh, a, zero, a logical zero would correspond to a minus 0.5 volts. So this is an NRZ or non-return to zero waveform. Uh, in this case, again, just consistent of zeros and ones are a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Of course, that pure square wave type data waveform is never going to make it across uh, the channel. It's going to be low pass filtered, attenuated, etc. And then we're going to see something that, let's say, is more sinusoidal like show up at the receiver, and that would be the blue waveform. So ideally, in the receiver, we want to sample that or the uh, the data that we're receiving. In this case, this hypothetical test waveform of ones and zeros, we want to uh, sample it near the peak. That'll give us the uh, most robustness against noise, the best signal noise ratio, uh, the most robustness against um, crosstalk, and also jitter. So. Uh, in practice, however, uh, our receive clock is never going to be perfectly aligned with the transmit clock. That would mean, mean we're not going to be sampling uh, near the red X's if left uncorrected. Well, let's say if we're sampling a little too slow, uh, we may start out sampling, uh, let's say, on the peaks and valleys of the waveform, but then we'll slowly slide off of the ideal sampling location. And then as we go further and further, you'll see we're getting closer and closer to sampling near the worst spot of our received data, and that would be near the zero crossing, where it's going to, you know, any small bit of noise or jitter uh, can easily flip a, a one to a zero or a zero to a one at our threshold device. And then over time, of course, uh, we'll start sampling, uh, you know, in, li in, in line with the, uh, the best sampling point again, and then we'll just slowly slide on and off of the optimal sampling point. So we'll end up with a lot of bit errors if we're uh, just sampling uncorrected. So we want to we want a scheme that allows us to uh, look at where we're currently sampling and develop some error criteria and then push uh, the sample the samples left or right to more better align with the actual data rate. And that's where our phase lock loop comes in. It can you know speed up and or slow down uh, a waveform, an oscillating waveform. Uh, to align with some reference waveform. So in this case, our reference waveform is the received data. And that again, again, is, is in this hypothetical case, it consists of, you know, a square wave ones and zeros. In practice, of course, it'll be a random waveform, so you cannot predict on a one zero one zero format. So, but in any case, we're going to form this poor man's clock out of our received waveform, out of this blue waveform. So we're going to threshold it, and then that's going to form something that looks more like the red waveform again. That's going to be our clock input. Again, it won't be square wave perfect, you know, uh, in general, but for this exercise, you know, we can pretend that it's it's a square wave. Now, we've also got our VCO output. That's what we're trying to uh, adjust or tune to be in a line with the transmitted data rate. So that output waveform, which in this case I'm showing as a sinusoid, however, in practice, it could also be a square wave, just using a sinusoid here. That's going to be our D input to our D flip-flop, which I'm also calling our sampling gate phase detector. And so our poor man's clock here, where I'm showing the red X, that's sampling D, the output of our VCO. Depending on where we're sampling, whether we're sampling it too early or too late, that's going to generate a little bit of a positive voltage or a little bit of a negative voltage and that voltage which is our phase detector output goes through the loop filter it which uh, it which is filtered essentially 
consisting of some form of integration and lead lag filtering. That's going to serve as our correction voltage to the VCO. It's going to either, again, speed it up or slow it down, depending on uh, which way we need to go to a lot better align with the transmitted data rate. And then we're just going to continue to do that until we start to sample the um, the, re the, re the received data waveform near the zero crossing. So on average, it never be precisely on that zero crossing, but we want to kind of hone in uh, more or less. We don't want, if anything, bounce around just slightly around that zero crossing location. Now, the ambiguity in this scheme is that there are two uh, zero crossings uh, in, a, in a sinusoidal waveform. You've got the positive going zero crossing uh, edge, if you want to call it, in this case, just slope, and you've got the falling side of the sinusoid. And depending on which, uh, whether you're sampling on the rising or falling edge of the sinusoid, you're going to get flip-flop voltages depending on whether you're sampling too early or sampling too late. So let's take, for instance, the, the, uh, what I'm calling temporary here versus steady state. Let's look at the temporary location on the positive side of the sinusoid. This just, just so happens to be where you don't want to be um, operating in steady state. This is what I'm also calling an unstable or positive feedback situation. In this case, let's just take the, the red sample, the late uh, sample. This, again, I'm saying the data comes in, we form a clock from it, and our sample here is red. I'm going to say here it's late, and that's going to generate a positive voltage. Now, this means that the TX clock is uh, slower than the received clock, and that's generating a positive voltage. But that's really not what you want. If the transmitted clock is, um, is slower than the received clock, then in other words, than the VCO clock, the, the RX clock here is also the VCO clock. Um, then we don't want to speed up the VCO. Then we're going to be even more out of a line with the slower transmitted data rate. Okay, so that's why I'm calling it a negative, uh, a negative, a positive feedback or unstable situation. Likewise, if we're sampling here on the early side, that means the TX clock is faster than the received clock. It's going to generate a negative voltage, which is going to slow down the VCO even more. So there's going to be even more disparity between the VCO rate and the received data rate. Fortunately, uh, because it's unstable, it's going to drive this point, you know, shall we say, over the hump of the sinusoidal waveform into the, to the stable region, the stable negative feedback portion, so that when you're sampling too late, you'll end up in this region near the valley of the sinusoid on the negative going side. And for early, it's going to drive the voltage, um, drive the sampling point near the peak uh, of the waveform on the negative going side of the sinusoid. And this is, of course, a stable situation. It's a negative feedback situation, negative slope, negative uh, feedback. And we've got, if you take think about it here, if the TX clock is slower than the received clock, that means that VCO is too fast. That means we generated about a negative voltage to slow the VCO down. Okay, and likewise on the on the early side down here, on the, up here. So this is a good situation. This is where we want, want to end up. And ultimately, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to form a, receive, a recovered or received clock, recovered clock. Um, so, and that's going to sample, this is, there's a little small positive going edge here. That's going to sample the received data to form our recovered data. So this scheme is, is kind of interesting in that we start off with a uh, received data in, which becomes a clock to our sampling gate. And then we use the VCO output as data to our sampling gate. So we take data, it becomes clock. We take something like a VCO, which you think is a clock, and it becomes data. But then we form uh, a clock out of that VCO output, which samples the data that came in uh, out of the channel. So that's the scheme here that we're going to be uh, using here in a nutshell. And again, uh, this just so happens to be one particular architecture, this sampling gate, what I'm calling sampling gate architecture, just one uh, particular way to go uh, of many. There are other architectures out there. Um, we're just exploring this one for now. We may get into some other architectures as we extend this video series further. In the next video, I'll go more and more. We'll, we'll dive into more detailed functionality of the phase lock loop itself. Until then.